All right, all right. Let's see here. Looks like I am live. Good, looking good. Uh, let's see. Zoom myself in. There we go. All right, getting live here. Good guys. Eight o'clock. Just got doing another live stream here before, and I want to get ready to go live. So, hey, sorry for the. We're getting started here in just a few seconds. Thank you for bearing with me here, uh, just for a little bit. Uh, we were getting everything set up, and we're going to go live here. Today, we're going to learn about how to recession proof your business using online courses. I'm going to walk you through a whole bunch of different steps of why I believe that this is the thing that you want to do. So, give me a quick second here. And then we will get ready to go live here in a jiffy. excited i'm excited for this free live webinar hey when you join please let me know you're joining guys i'd love to see you here put your name in the chat uh we are here on facebook youtube and twitter yep i believe um and i'm excited to see if you guys are here watching me so just let me know if you are um 
It was pretty awesome. Um, if you are here, there we go. Yep, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So all green in there and good to go. Let me know you can hear me in the chat. Let me see, just put it here in the chat. Now, a couple of housekeeping things I want to tell you guys. You know, when you actually register, if you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter, you can actually join me in the webinar room. And I'm going to tell you the benefit of going into the webinar room. The benefit of going into the webinar room is that you get to get all the cool handouts that I'm going to have for you today. I'm going to give out some pretty cool stuff for you today um, concerning about how to create an online course to research proof your business. And I want to make sure you get those resources. Now, you might be asking, well, Claude, why don't you not just give me the link in the chat of YouTube or Facebook or maybe on Twitter? Well, I'm going to tell you, it's a lot easier for me to do it in a webinar room. And guess what, guys? It costs you nothing to get into the webinar room. It's free. So just join the webinar room. I can do it right there for you. This makes it clean and seamless um, way for you to just get the information and get the tip because as I go through it, it's there. And plus, when you go through the replay and you watch the replay in the webinar room, you still get the handouts as well. And it also benefit if you end up watching the replay, right, in the webinar room, then you also get some other cool stuff too as well. So, guys, it makes it a lot easier. It makes it a lot simpler. And one of the things is even if you're watching the replay, you can still ask your questions if you have a question later when you register, right? Because you're ready to go into the replay and submit your question. It goes directly to my email address, and then I'll be able to see it and then answer it directly back to you quickly. Now, if you want to take the slow version, you can put the chat, your question in the chat, either on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter, in the comment section, right? And then I would see it. And then, you know, when I get to it type of thing, right? And then I make sure it's, I, you know, so it's a little dip, more difficult. It's easier for me to go through the webinar room. I think you guys get my point, right? But hey, if you don't want to go there, but you're on a live stream, you want to get your question answered, right? All you got to do, if you're on YouTube or Facebook, is type in the letter Q, capital Q, with a colon, semicolon, and then type in your question. That way, when I'm going looking through my comments, I can filter by the first letter Q, capital Q, and then your questions will come up, and I can answer that, right, at the appropriate time during our Q&A session of this webinar. All right? So... God bless you. So please do that. Introduce yourself as you come in. And I'm excited to be here to share with you guys some things. So we're here to talk about how to recession proof your business, right? So I got a question for you guys. The first question I have for you right now, I wanted you to answer. If you're watching on YouTube, Twitter, well, I can't see your comments on Twitter, guys. It's just, it's a one-way broadcast on Twitter. So if you're actually on Twitter watching this, I just gonna just come over to the, the come over to my YouTube channel, Facebook page, go to the Marketing Funnel Coach. Right, and come watch it over there, or just go to um, oh, you don't even have the link in the post. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the link, I'm gonna put the link here for you can see on the live stream. I'm gonna put it in the in the um, in our session here. Uh, give me a second. I have someone, I have one of my moderators do it if they can get that over there and do that. Um, if not, we'll get to it to the end. But anyway, um, if you go to market the marketing funnel coach on YouTube. Subscribe, look for that channel. You'll see the live stream. You can go there. You'll see the link that you can click on in YouTube and go watch and go register to be in the actual webinar. All right. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, one thing I need to do here, I almost forgot to do. So now we're on live stream. So now you guys are going to go in the webinar. I'm opening up the webinar room now. I almost got to do that. So now the webinar room is now being open. You can guys go in here and you can watch the replay if you watch it later as well. Okay. So, Here's what we're going to do first. The first thing I want you to do, I want you to answer a question for me. All right. I got a quick question for you guys in the poll. All right. I want to know how many people do you believe a global recession will occur in 2023? I want you to type that in the chat. I'm going to put that in the chat for you guys to read All right, as well. Do you believe a global recession is going to occur in 2023? All right. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna change that. I don't want you. I don't want to ask that question first. I don't. I don't. I don't. Actually, I want to know. Do, do you actually believe that we are currently in a recession right now in 2022? Do you believe we're in a recession right now in 2022? All right. I want to know. Put that in the chat, guys. Let me know if you think we're in a current recession here in 2022. Okay. Let's see. Okay, we got some responses coming in. All right, so some of you guys say yes, no. All right, now, so let's find out, guys. 
Let's find out. Let's go to just go to Google. You know, Google knows all, right? You guys know Google knows all. So Google does know all. And if Google knows all, then we should know if we're good here, right? So what I want to do is um we're gonna go check out Google here and see what Google has to say about all this on our list here. So let me quickly go to Google. Let me type in a question. Give me a quick second. I'm gonna pull this up for you guys. Thanks for your patience. Okay, almost there. Oops, did not mean to do that. You guys are probably like, what are you doing? All right, I'm just getting something together here so I can show you something. All right, cool. All right, all right, all right. Okay, now. All right, here we go, here we go. All right, cool. So here we are. So what I want to share with you guys here real quick is um, we're going to go to Google, right? And we're going to find out, right? Is there actually a recession going on? It's much better. Are we currently in a session? I want to just type that in to the chat here. Are we currently in, oops, in a recession? Are we currently in a research? Because you know Google knows everything, right, guys? Right? So what is Google telling us? Google tells us, right? According to a traditional definition, the U.S. is not currently in a recession. Many of many or of many or all of the products featured here are from our partners. Who, okay, whatever. All right. So that was November second, twenty twenty-two. Are we currently in a recession? Let's see. In the U.S. current is the U.S. in a recession right now? Go here. People who ask. According to the general definition, two consecutive quarters of negative gross domestic product, the U.S. entered a recession in the summer of 2022. So, guys, look, some people think that we were in a recession back in 2022. 2022, we were in a recession, guys. So, if you guys believe that we're in a recession, yes, you know. But Google's saying, well, Google found someone that says that we're in a recession back in the summer of 2022. Now, let's go look at some more sources. You just can't go off of one. We can't go off a of sample size of one. So what? You got any more people say that, right? So that was uh, Forbes. No, that was Forbes the first one we said. Yep, in 2022. So Forbes is, you got to believe Forbes, man. You got to believe Forbes though, right? So is there a recession going on? In, all right, let's see here. The recession, what does a recession mean in 2022? 
All right. A recession means that everything's more expensive. All right. No, okay. Is US is US officially in a recession? Okay, here's another question people ask. Are we in a recession? This is gonna be the nerd wallet. Though the economy has occasionally oh, you guys can't see what I'm showing. Let me show you guys. My bad. My uh, my apologies. All right. Though the economy has occasionally sputtered in 2023, it has certainly been resilient. And according to a traditional definition, the U.S. is not currently in a recession. The conventional benchmark has been that two consecutive quarters of a generally slowing economy defines a recession. So this is Nerd Wallet. So they're saying, hey, you know, the summer thing, you know, Forbes. I know you, I know you might not be fake news, but I don't. I think it's a little bit fake news. Fake news. There, we're not in a recession. Technically. All right. So we think we're not in a recession. So I got two. One say we are. So we need a tiebreaker here. I need a tiebreaker, right? All right. Let's see what else said in here. How likely is a recession in 2022? This is how likely it was. 96% say the likelihood of a recession is in the United States within the next 12 months based on the on our probability model. And this was uh article was written back in... Don't know. Conferenceboard.org. Let's see. Let's go to it. It's October 5th, 2022. Recession probability. Look at this, man. 2022. 96%. August 2022. Right? They're saying that we've been in a recession. So I don't know. 96% likelihood of recession in the United States within the next 12 months. Based upon the opportunity probability model, this supports our expectation of recession before the end of 2022. So, hey, guys, we're in December. We are now in December, and this is saying that we're supposed to be in a recession. I don't know. I do know they're saying the last quarter of recession and the first quarter of 2023 are likely to see negative real GDP growth rates. So they're saying now we could be in this quarter. We could be seeing a recession. We have articles said in summer. You can believe it. We could have hit one. We could be in one now. I don't know. It's just confusing data here. No one's really agreeing on it, right? But people are saying something's coming, right? Maybe, you know, the feds are doing their job and, you know, they're actually preventing the actual deep recession that we could be, we would could have been headed into by raising inflation rates. I don't know. Um, but well, are we in a recession yet? Forbes advisor, seven days ago. All right, this is... By Forbes, seven days ago. What did they say? All right. In the summer. Hope you guys can hear me, okay? In the summer. Oh, I missed it. In the summer of 2022, politicians, economists, and market professionals engaged in a great semantic debate over whether or not the U.S. economy was in a recession. The argument, invertibly influenced by politics, came down to how you define the word recession. All right, when was this article read? I want to make sure I got the right date. This is November 30th, 2022. All right. Okay, cool. According to the general definition, two consecutive quarters of a negative gross domestic product, the United States entered a recession in the summer of 2022. According to the general definition, okay, the organization that defines U.S. business cycles, the National Bureau of, Ec of Economic Research, NBER, takes a different view. According to the NB NBER definition of recession, a significant decline in the economic activity that is spread across the economy and that has and that lasts more than a few months. We were not in a recession in the summer of 2022. All right. We were in a recession. We're not in a recession. What definition do you believe in? Do you say tomato or do you say tomato? Which one is a proper pronunciation? Because based upon the proper pronunciation of how you say tomato or tomato depends on if you're going to be in a recession or not. All right. Okay, I don't know, guys. It's confusing to me. But I do know my groceries and my gas bills, gonna, even though the gas has come back down a little bit, thankfully. Praise God for that, right? So what's it say? How do we know? How do we know? Okay, we have a hard time believing the economy is in a recession today, given a strong labor market and a, a corporate earnings growth, said Tim Holland. All right, to keep, all right, so who we see? Key economic measures here, gross domestic product, GDP, most recent report, GDP third quarter is up two point nine two point nine percent. Good, great, good. Consumer price index up 0.7.7 percent. So, question: Do you believe we're currently in recession now in twenty twenty two? Hey guys, I gotta say, I can't admit. 
The data is conflicting. I would say, based upon the data that we have at hand, there's no concrete definition that we are currently, that all the experts would agree that we are currently in a recession. But so what am I concerned for? Why even having this then? Claude, we're now in a recession. Because I believe that the recession is coming. So my question for you, and I want you guys to answer this question right now, all right? Do you believe a global recession will occur in 2023? I'm putting that in the chat. I want you to answer that in the chat. Do you believe a current recession? And then if you're in my webinar room, answer the poll question, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow it up there now. It's in the chat. It's in the poll question. It's in the, I'm publishing it right now in the webinar room, right? Let me know. Do you currently think that we're going to go in a recession in 2023? All right. Now. While you're answering that, let's do a little Google research. Let's go back to Google, man. You gotta go back to Google. And let's see what the experts say that Google has found to give us the answer. Are we in a recession in 2023? All right, so let's type it in. A global. Will we enter a global recession in 2023? Let's see. The US, the US will probably stick will stick a soft landing next year. The world's largest economy is forecast to narrowly avoid a recession as, as inflation fades and unemployment nudges up slightly, according to Globe, Golden Sachs, Goldman Sachs research. This is November 18th, 2022. All right. So why is US expected to see, see stuff is changing? Why would the U.S. expect to escape? Let's see here. Why the U.S. is expected to escape recession 2023? The U.S. will probably stick stick a soft landing next year. The world's largest economy. Our economists say that there's a 35% probability that the U.S. tips into a recession over the next year and estimate that's well below the median of 65% among forecasters in a Wall Street Journal survey. The U.S. may avoid a downturn in part because data on economic activity is nowhere close to re Recessionary GDP grew 2.6% analyzed in the third quarter. According to an advanced report, the country added 261,000 jobs last month. All right. So they're saying Goldman Sachs said we ain't going no recession in 2023. All right. Now, here's another economics.com. Who was that from? Goldman Sachs. All right. What will happen to the economy in 2023? Let's go here. People ask. American economics enters 2023 in a fundamental stronger shape than either China's or any in Europe. The Federal Reserve aggressiveness rate increase will tip the economy into a recession, but the labor market still strong and household savings, it will be mild ones. They're saying we're going to recession, but it might not be as bad. It might be mild. Hmm. Okay. Which countries face recession in 2023? Russia, Indonesia, India, the UK, and Germany are among the countries that may contribute the most to this global amount of output loss. Mm. In our next conference, that was October 12th of 2022. Okay. All right, all right. So why a global recession is inevitable in 2023? Let's read this article. It came out November 18th. Why a global recession is inevitable in 2023? Okay, yep, sure. All right. The editors of the Collins Reach English Dictionary that declared, all right, all right, I just need to get down to the nitty gritty here. Am I reading about a recession? Are we reading about something totally different here? Is this a fake news article? Is this a clickbait article that got me to click on something? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Vladimir Putin, invasion of Ukraine. Okay, okay. Three shocks. Okay. The biggest, okay, I'm not really seeing why we're going to be in a recession in this article. No, I got to have an account to log in to read that one. All right, don't have an account. Sorry. All right, this one says Forbes says a recession. Going back to Forbes, man. Do we believe Forbes November 1st? Recession will begin late 2023 or early 2024. So we got mild, no recession, maybe recession 2023. Now it's getting pushed out a little bit longer. All right. Here's the bottom line, guys. Whatever you believe, if we're going to be in a recession or not, right? But looking at the data 
and looking at the economic terms and looking at the cons of conversations around are we going to be in economic recession or not makes me want to say we should be prepared, right? Do you agree? Do you want to be prepared if a recession comes? And now here's the deal, guys. I truly believe that a recession in some form of fashion will occur. Now, will we do a great job in the United States? I'm here in the United States. Will we do a great job with the Federal Reserve and all those great people that, that study this and our economics, econo economists in the United States that study all this stuff on a daily, minute, hourly basis? That they will do the right thing for the country and make sure that we do not go into recession or avoid a harsh recession. That is very strongly probable. But will as some sort of recession occur, that is probable. Will we get hit by another pandemic again that will cause us all to shut down our businesses and go back into the house for a little while and most of our businesses lose money? I don't know. That is probable. That is probable. Right? So what do you do though? Right? What do you do to protect yourself? Is there such thing as a, a recession-proof business? That is my next question for you guys, right? My next question for you guys is, do you believe that there is a such thing as a recession-proof business? Okay? So I got a question for you right now. I want to answer this question. The question is, which business would thrive during a recession? Now, if you go into the webinar room, you will see the question in the poll. Which business would thrive in a recession? Automotive news car business? Or home improvement services, right? Let me know. And if you're in the chat, type in another type in another question. I mean, type in the answer. I want to know if you think it's automotive, new car sales, or home improvement services. Which one is recession proof? Do you believe is recession proof? Right. Answer those questions for me in the chat, or if you're in the webinar room, answer that question there in the poll. Right. That's my quick poll for you. All right. Now, so let's go to Google though. You know I like Google. So we're gonna go to Google and type in um oops. We're gonna Google, we're gonna type it in. We're gonna say, hey, hey guys, which businesses are we such proof? There we go. See, I ain't the only one. All right, so according to Google, we have here. Healthcare and related services, grocery and related businesses, tax and accounting services, financial advisor services, supply chain and delivery businesses, daycare and childcare needs, automate automotive maintenance businesses, home hardware store. What? I mean, there's a bunch of them here. This is two days ago. Let's read this. This is from Legal Zoom. Legal Zoom, right? Legal Zoom. Healthcare, related services, grocery store. And related business. I mean, that makes sense. Grocery stores. That makes sense to you guys? Raise your hand if it doesn't make sense. Right? Send me in the chat if it doesn't make sense to you. Right? If you're in a recession, people don't have enough money to go out and buy stuff. Right? Go to a restaurant. And so what they got to do in order to save money, they got to go to a grocery store. They got to cook it on their own. They got to they gotta get rid of the, the service of having someone else cook for them. They got to cook and feed themselves. It's cheaper. So grocery stores, boom. Right? Health. Healthcare and related services. Right? I don't know. I guess. Even during recession, people still need... Comprehensive treatment. You still need. You still get. You still gonna get sick during recession. Doesn't matter, right? So you save some money by not going out to eat, so you can continue to pay for your your health care, right? Uh, tax and accounting services. Okay, taxes are inevitable. Okay, we got a pair of taxes no matter what. So they still seem to boom during recession. Financial advisory services boom even more. It makes sense. Hey, we're help me save money. Help me manage my money so I can keep it and not lose it. What you got some you got some ideas for me, right? I can understand that. Supply chain delivery businesses, all right. Hey, Amazon took off during COVID. People said I can get stuff delivered. Delivery demand goes up. Daycare and child care needs, right? You still gotta take care of the kids. Autom automotive maintenance, man. You gotta drive around, you still need to get your car fixed. Home hardware stores. Instead of having someone else do it, you can come and do it yourself or Home Depot Lowe's, baby. Everyone was there at Home Depot Lowe's during the pandemic. I know that. Plumbing and utility services. Hey, you still need to fix your hair. You still need to fix your your home. Your home. Tech and IT support services. Right. Everybody's online now. Everyone goes home and everyone's on shopping online. So cyber cyber attacks are real. So you need to make sure you got some good cyber security. All right. So what what else? Who you know? I don't just believe in one guy. What two businesses are recession proof? Okay, what's this article here? So this is going to be by ZenBusiness.com. Grocery and food stores, accounting and taxes. 
So they're saying it's information technology. So they're saying some of the same stuff. What else we got down here? 19 recession proof businesses. Who's this by? Smallbusinesstrends.com. 19. They got 19. Let's see who the 19 are. We have um, amazing recession proof ideas here, right? 19. So we got food and beverage businesses. Good. Yeah, I think we understand now. Healthcare, we saw that one before. Pet care businesses. Wow, pet care, man. You know, comes out of my healthcare, my dog's healthcare, man. I don't know. I don't know. But then again, I'm not pet lover like that. You know, I personally have a different opinion about pet insurance. You know, I don't, you know, it's different, different. I don't believe in, I don't believe in it. I understand why we have it. But then again, I know, hey, but I do know it could be expensive. Trust me, I do know. All right. Renovation and repair industry, including plumber, utility services, and auto repair services. Still got to get stuff fixed, man. You live in the house, you stay in the house, you got to get stuff fixed. You got to get stuff repaired. It's not going to change. Real estate and property management. Well, recession can actually get be good for the real estate and property management sector as it is often the best time to invest in property. Hmm. Interesting. Not everybody, no, you know, some people can't afford to stay in their home, so they might get evicted. And so, hey, if you got cash, you can invest in property, get it cheap. Okay. Didn't think about it like that, you know? All right. Baby product business. You got to take care of the kids. Child care. Got to take care of the kids, man. Financial and accounting services. We saw that before. Freelancing, including virtual assistant, writer, and more. All right. You need to, get, you need to make it. Make ends meet, man. Let me become a freelancer. Do some extra stuff on the side. Cleaning cleaning companies. Hmm. The state of the economy has absolutely no bearing on the many rules and regulations that commercial and public spaces are required to adhere for hygiene and safety reasons. Okay, hygiene is still hygiene, man. Tattoo parlors. Now, this is one I don't get. An interesting twist when compiling a list of recession-proof businesses is the inclusion of the tattoo parlor. It doesn't seem to make sense on the face of its of it as tattoos must surely be considered a luxury item, but the fact remains that tattoo products continue to do well even during a recession. It's probably because of the rel relative inexpensiveness of tattoos compared to how long it lasts, plus getting ink has been growing in popularity as each generation of people emerges. Now, personally, I'm not a tattoo guy. So, with that being said, if you are a tattoo person, and if it's your thing, it's your thing. And I guess the recession ain't going to stop it. Oh, well. Okay, business providing retail therapy. Retail therapy. Courier services. Beauty business. Still got to look good, feel good. Technology support. Funeral services. Safety agencies. I mean, staffing agencies. Excuse me, educational businesses. Education and training courses are always in demand, so a business providing such a can continue to be successful during a recession. A lot of people who, who will be losing jobs and, and trying to retain in another area, which immediately boosts the amount of consumers avail, available by providing education and training courses, either on site or at home. These kinds of businesses can actually thrive off a recession while simultaneously helping the country get back on its economic feet. Hmm. Education businesses, write that down. Write that one down. Digital marketing. No matter where what the economy is doing, digital marketing such as SEO, SEM, social media campaigns, and email marketing will always be on one of the most cost-effective ways for each reach new customers. All right, that's number nineteen. All right, those are that. What else we have here? I saw Forbes. Okay, Forbes. Forbes has ten. They got anything different? It went nineteen to ten. We see them. We see, we see a trend here now. We see three things. Home improvement, contracting, okay, online reselling. Makes sense. Cleaning services, saw that. Child care, saw that. Online freelance, saw that. Online teaching, once again, we saw that earlier. Online teaching, remember that, write that down. Economic bookkeeping or financial planning. I mean, accounting, bookkeeping or financial planning. We saw that. Car repair, saw that one. Beauty business, saw that. Food and beverage business, all right, we saw that. So those are your 10, right? Online teaching, once again, e-learning industry is projected to grow from let me just tell you, 
growth from $197 billion to 20, in 2020 to $840.11 billion by 2023. We're now in 2022, going into the 2023, right? We are th almost two years into this thing. Guys, there's a lot of money to be made here in uh, online teaching, okay? So that's why I want you to write this down. All right, one more. I think we got a trend. One more. Can we find one more? All right, anybody know Tony Robbins? Who knows Tony Robbins? Raise your hand. Give me a hand clap. Give me a thumbs up. Something, if you know Tony Robbins. No, he doesn't know Tony Robbins. So what does Tony Robbins say? Because Tony Robbins knows. He knows, man. He knows how to be successful. He knows how to make you successful, all right? So what does he say? All right, let's see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 12 minutes, groceries, healthcare, candy. Oh, candy. Simple pleasures, easy and expensive, simple pleasure. Beer, wine, and liquor. I mean, simple pleasure. Drown your miseries away. Okay. Discount retailers, makes sense. Children's goods, pet industry. Kind of went over that before. Financial advisors, kind of went over that. Cybersecurity and tech support, went over that. Repairs, debt collection. Eh, hate to say it, but you know, a lot of people go on debt and your debt collection. Start working. Freight operations, Amazon, all the UPS, all those guys. All right. So with that being said, right, you now know what business thrive with. So what do you guys say in the audience? Anybody say anything in the chat? All right. Great. So no questions. So here, here we have what business thrive during recession, right? The answer is, if you know that answer, the answer would be what? Home improvement services. They are business of the two, automotive new car new car sales or home improvement services. Home improvement services will thrive. So, with that being said, guys, now, what do you think about the e-learning industry? Let's let's just let's just use common sense and think about this for a second, guys. Claude, you said that how to create an online course to recession proof your business. Why online course, right? Well, we just read one of research proof businesses is teaching, online teaching by Forbes, by Tony Robbins, right? Online teaching is one, and it's going to be growing. It's going to boom. It's a growing industry. Think about it, right? It's a way to save money. Think about it. Let's think about it logically. You got three categories. You got to do it yourself first. I'm going to do it all myself. I don't need, you know, just give me the instructions and I'll do it myself. Then you got the guys in the middle and say, hey, and the guys on the other end and say, hey, do it everything for me. Now, when you go into recession, okay, you have to be tight with your money, right? And as the inflation goes up, right, our money has less buying power, right? And so when money has less buying power, means you can't buy as much as we used to with our, with our money. And so we can't buy as much as we do. So what are one of the things we're going to end up doing? We got to cut out having someone else do the work for us because it's just, we got to save money. So now you put you in another category, which would be maybe do it with me, right? Or give me the manual and I'll just go do it myself, okay? So we go from having someone do us the service for us, going out to eat, going to the restaurants. That's why you never saw restaurants on the business, right? We don't go out to eat. We got cook at home now instead, right? Right, and maybe instead of having a, a, a plumber do it, and we say, you know what? I'm somewhat mechanically inclined. I can figure out how to do it myself, right? Some of those things, right? All right, instead of going to get my hair cut every two weeks, I got to push it out a little bit. Maybe I go once a month, save a little bit of money, right? Or I figure out how to cut my own hair and do it myself, right? So you kind of get, we go, we go from having someone do it for us to coming out. And either show me how to do it, give me the, give me the manual, or teach me how to do it. Work with me and teach me how to do it, right? So another example is, all right, guys, if I were to give you a car, here's a brand new car. It's yours. Have it. Go with it. It's yours. Claude, I don't know how to drive a car. All right, that's cool. Here's the owner's manual for the car. I'll tell you what a gas pedal is, right? Uh, I still don't know how to drive a car. All right, okay, here's the uh, driver's education book that tells you how to drive a car. Um, it doesn't tell me exactly how to drive this car. Can you show me how to drive the car? That's do it with you, right? I'm going to show you, right? I'm going to show you. I'm going to train you. I'm going to get in the car with you. I'm going to instruct you, give you some materials, right? That's online course, right? You can do it online. You can do it in person. You can do it online, right? Same thing. I'm going to give you some manuals. I'm going to give you some instructions. I'm going to give you some videos. You're not going to sit down together. We're going to do it together. Online course, right? It's kind of helping you figure out how to drive your brand new car, 
Okay. You know, you got the manual, which is, hey, here's your manual. Go 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 off and do it. That's your, your that's your, like your books, right? Because you might write maybe some non-interactive courses you might have. Just go off and they do it without you interacting with them. Okay. And it's, it's, people do that too. Right? But that's usually your lower end. So think about it though, right? So now you got your do-it-yourselfers. And all they want is to give me the manual. That's your books, right? Some cheat sheets, stuff like that that you give them to help them to do it themselves, right? And then you got the guy in the middle. So hey, I need a little bit more than a book. Can you kind of walk with me a little bit on this? Kind of look over your shoulder or you can help me and be there and consult me, right? That's kind of guy in the middle, right? Give me an online course, coach me up. And then you got the guy on the other end and say, hey, just do it for me, man. I don't care. Here's the money. Do it for me, right? Now, a lot of times in the recession, when the economy is great, a lot of people say, just do it for me, man. Money's flowing, baby. Money is flowing. Do it for me. But then when the money, the economy starts to shrink up a little bit, tighten up, right? And people start, eh, maybe can you just do it with me? I don't have enough money to have you do it for me. Can you show me how to do it? Or then they get real, real tired. Like, can you just give me the manual and I'll just try my best to figure it out? Okay. So that's kind of where we are. So that's why I'm telling you guys. When you can do an online course, it's going to create an opportunity if you reach reach a market that cannot afford your service or maybe your high-end product, okay? But they can afford maybe your online course, all right? And it's going to help them. So now what so you said, so is this, so this could really could be beneficial in a lot of reasons, not only during a recession, but also in great economic times. Because we all know that everybody ain't super rich according to even the economy's doing well. Not everybody's super rich. Not everybody's millionaires can afford the highest products. Everybody can't afford a Lamborghini, even the greatest economy, right? So you still got some people that are going to be in that middle in that middle fence like or down below, like show me how to do it. Give me the book or show me how to do it, right? So that's why an online course is a perfect product that every business should have to make your business more recession-proof. Does that make sense? If it doesn't make sense, tell me in the chat. If it makes sense, give me a thumbs up. Say, yes, it makes sense, Claude. All right? So, guys, I have one more question for you. Now, so we, we hopefully you understand the power of online courses in and e, and the e-learning industry. So my last question for you, I have for you now. What is the expected growth rate of the e-learning industry? Is it 2.3% annually? 0%, 7.6%, 14.6%, or is it 20.2%? If you're in the webinar room, go ahead and answer the question in the poll. The poll question, if you're on chat, just type in what you said. I'll say it again. Is the expected growth rate of e-learning industry is 0%, 2.3%, 7.6%, 14.6%, 20 or 20.2% expected? Okay? Now, as you're answering that, we're going to go ask Google, man, because Google knows it all. We're going to go to Google, and we're going to ask them the answer. And Google's going to give us a great insight on this. All right, so let me go show you. All right, here's an article. Demand for global e-learning market size will grow at a compound annual um, growth rate of 14.6% expected to hit U.S. 374.3 billion mark by 2026. 14% compound annual growth rate. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a huge industry, man. So that's that's in, in recession, in the upturn, downturn, doesn't matter. It's growing. It's growing. So that's why I want you guys to be there. I want to show you guys how to make, how to create online courses so you can recession-proof your business. And even that, if you're not in a recession... We just learned the beginning of this, 2022. Maybe not a recession 2023. Maybe a recession will occur. occur. Maybe it happened in 2024. But guys, I want you to be prepared. I'm preparing myself online course. I want you to be prepared for online courses too as well. So you help you grow your business even in a good times, an upturn, and a downturn. Right? It's going to be the difference between you operating the red or operating the black. All right? That's what's going to be the difference. All right. So with that being said, how many people believe you need an online course now? Let me know. Let me know in the chat if you believe you need an online course. All right? I'll give you guys the opportunity. If you're in the webinar room, tell me there too is real. How many, people, how many people think you need an online course? All right. Okay. I want to give you guys some cool stuff here in a minute.
All right, here we go. So, all right, here, here we go. So now, guys, I want to share with you guys some top 20 tools for creating an online course. And before I, I deep dive in this, this you guys are going to be able to get this right now. Um, if you're in the webinar room, I'm putting it up there now. You can download it. Uh, you get this resource. I'm going to kind of walk you through here in a second. But before I go through that, I want to kind of just categorize what I believe are some um, the tools that you actually need to create an online course. I know it's going to be on everyone's answer question. The tools you need is like, what do I need? What do I need? Right? Um, you're going to need something to create a PDF document. You're going to be able to create a document. That's simple. It's free. Most computers have. You can export a Word document as a PDF document. It's very simple, right? But you're going to need that. You're going to need some preset software. You're going to need an online assessment software, right? So you can online assess, do quizzes and stuff like that. Um, you're going to need some grammar editing, like something a little bit more better than Word or pages. I use something called Grammarly. It's easy. Good, good stuff. Video editing software, video hosting, virtual meeting software, Video screen recorder, you know, do a screen recording. Um, email software and a, a customer management system, right? The manager customers you're getting through coming in. They ain't going to need a merchant account shopping cart. Okay. Now, I'm going to give you some of the top 22. And there's some other tools out there that was in this, was in this book. But I'm going to share with you what they are. Just real quick, high level, right? So here's what you need. You're going to need an all-in-one course platform. One of them is, is Teachable, which is a known one. I use something called Kartra. You know, there's ClickFunnels. There's a whole bunch of them out there um, that you could use, right? There's Think, 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 Fick, Think, Ific, Think, Ific. Okay, how about I'm saying that name? That's probably why I don't use them. There's also Kajabi, right? All your all-in-one courses, right? And then um, you got something with your uh, WordPress. There's a plugin you could use if you're using WordPress or WordPress courseware. That you can use as well if you're using WordPress. Now here's where you like some call some create some documents, some artworks. So they've got Canva. Um, also good for illustrations. You also have something called Free Form Swift PDF Editor, right? You can use PowerPoint, Easy Test Maker, right? And then I go over Grammarly Contagion for screen recording, Vimeo, Zoom for hosting, and recording your videos, um, your content, right? Even having your classes. Um, so I go over a bunch of these guys um, in here in this document. That, that you can have. I'm going to give it to you for, absolutely for free. Um, all you got to do is register for the... Oops. All you got to do is register, and you can have it for free. Okay? So, that's the top 20 rules. But I want to give you guys even something more powerful than that. Okay? So, you really want to know how to do an online course. All right? And you really want to put everything together. So, this is what I did. I had my team put together not only those top 20 tools there that you see there, but I also had them put together a, a basically a resource cheat sheet, right, for, Go just go do all the research, man. Do all the research. If you were going to go out there try to figure out how to do it yourself, and you're going to spend hours on Google and on your computer, maybe over days trying to figure out how can you put together an online course. Because Claude Betty in this webinar told me that an online course is just to prove your business, and I believe that it will do. He showed me the data. I believe it will. I believe it's a booming industry. We got to create a course. So, team, how do we do it? Well, I want to save you a whole bunch of work because I have my team do it. Took them hours and days to put all the same things that you would do to put together in a nice resource cheat sheet. And this is a beautiful thing, guys. It's really, really beautiful. So, all the cool stuff you need is right here is your one-stop Google search. All in PDF document. All right. The basics of an online course. Creating a perfect topic, learning outcomes, and course goals. Right. All stuff you need. Engage intended audience and pre-selling. Right. All this stuff is here for you. I'm going to put it. Um, you can get it right now. I want to share it in the webinar room. All right, it's up there now. You can download. Uh, building revenue from the, from the beginning, right? How to pre-sell your course so you make money up front, dudes. I'm telling you, that is the key, dude. I tell, I don't like doing things unless I know I'm gonna make money up front. Okay, especially if I'm gonna advertise for it. I gotta know that I'm gonna make money from my advertising. So how do you pre-sell your course? Like I don't know how much. Do I, do I even know people going to want my course? All the resources you need to figure that out are right here in this document. Okay? Find the right platform. What platforms? I just gave you four platforms. I use Kartra. There's Kajabi. There's ClickFunnels. There's Thinkific. Right? There's uh, so many of them out there. Right? Teachable. Which platform is the right platform for you? Right? Planning course content. How you create, how you create a course content? 
How you lay that out? Creating lesson plans and course content. How you do all that, right? How to launch it. How you launch your course, okay? It's all there, right? I give you all the resources, right? You guys can get it right now for free. All you did, we re-registered for this webinar. You can have these courses. You can have this resource cheat sheet, right, for free. Go ahead and get it right now. Um, it's yours to have right now. All right, so it's in the webinar room. You should be able to click on the link to download it along with the top 20 tools. Now, that doesn't stop right there, guys. I got something else cool for you, okay? Because if you believe that if you believe that online course is going to be the way to research proof your business, what I have next for you is my five-minute guide to creating an online course. Five-minute guide to create an online course. I gave you the tools. I'm giving you resource cheat sheets. I'm going to give you this five-minute guide. Now, I will start off with this five-minute guide. And guys, if you're in the webinar room right now, I just put it up for you to download. You can share it. You can down. I mean, you can download. I shared it with you. You can download it right now. So if you're not in the webinar room and you're on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, get register, get in the webinar room so you can get this stuff right now. Okay. Um, because the only way you better get it is if you're in the webinar room. Um, but it's here for you for free. All you do is give me your name, email address, that's it. You get it. All right. So a five minute guide to create an online course. I'll outline my team had this outline for you. Where to start testing the waters, right? Creating your content. Pick a platform. Research your topic, right? Create your lesson plans. Create your content. Marketing your course. Email marketing. Social media marketing. Launching your online course. Soft launch, right? It's basically going to do a soft launch. You're not going to do a hard launch. You're going to do a soft launch. Kind of test the waters out a little bit, all right? Get some feedback. Final edits. And final thoughts, excuse me, I got to get a quick drink of water. All this here, so here's how I would do this. These resources I'm giving you right now, here's how I would use it. I would start with the five-minute guide to create an online course. Read through that five minutes, right? And then take this five-minute course, and then I want you to go to the resource cheat sheet. Go to the resource cheat sheet and by each section, so I talked about here, where to start testing the waters, right? Right, where to start testing the waters. I want you to go to resource cheat sheet, and then you go to building revenue for, from the beginning. Go there. Go check out these resources here, right? That's what I want you to do, okay? Engaging the intended audience and pre-selling. Go there, too, as well, all right? Okay, so then we go to the next section, creating your content, right? Go back to the resource cheat sheet. And then I want you to go to planning your course content, creating lesson plans and courses. I want you to go there, right? All right. And then we go to pick a platform, go back to the cheat sheet, how to pick to find the right platform. I want you to go there, okay? So I want you to use it together. Creating lesson plans. We already talked about it. creating your content. We talked about that, right? Marketing your course. So we go to the cheat sheets, right? We want to talk about launching, how to launch, right? Go there. And yep, I think that's it. Yep. So that's that's how I want you to use this. That's how I want you to research sources, right? And then you can also go to the top twenty tools, right? See what the tools are. Look those up. See what what, um, what you like, right? So these are all here for you guys. Go ahead and download it. I think it's really going to help you out um, a lot uh, and get you guys kicked off and started. Now, that's it. I really want you guys to do that. That's all I really want to. Now, for those who want to accelerate, I do have something I want to offer you. If you want to, if you want to hear it, stay online. Otherwise, we are done uh, talking. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you believe online course is way for you. Okay. But if those who want to accelerate, want to get this thing done faster, and want to be, here's the manual, guys. I'm giving you guys a manual. Go do it yourself. Give me all the instructions. Go do it yourself. They're all it's all for free. Go through all the resources, the guides, everything, the tools. I kind of laid it out for you. Put it together. Go do it. Okay. Now. If you're in a position where you're like, hey, hey, that's cool, Claw, but, you know, can you, like, maybe show me a little bit more how to do it? Then here's what I'm going to offer you, all right? I'm going to offer you guys a course that I'm creating called Launch Your Online Course. You see? This is that, you see that guy right there? You see that guy right there? It's called a course called Launch Your Online Course, all right? And in this course, what I'm going to do is teach you how to launch your online course. The goal of the course objective is... By the end of the course, that you will have a course ready to pre-sell, and we will start pre-selling the course, right? That's the ultimate goal, right? So within 
30 days. Of course, it's going to last six to eight weeks. Within 30 days, we're going to launch, we're going to pre-sell a course together. I mean, I'm going to do mine, and you're going to do yours, okay? I'm going to, you can be a look over my shoulder, and I'm going to show you how, exactly how to do it, all right? And we're going to start that lesson in January. We're going to start in January when we do that, okay? Now, the goal of it, once again, is for you to be able to pre-sell a course. Now, the cool thing about this, what I'm going to do is, if you're unable to, for some reason, go through everything you want, and to be able to come out without being able to sell your course properly, you go through all my instructions and you do everything, you attend, and you go through all the notes and everything like that. But then I'll give you, I'll refund your money. I'm gonna refund your money. Okay. Not only that, I'm gonna give you like 30 days to decide if that's what you wanna, you know, if you still like the course or not. And then as we start the class and we get up to the point where we're pre selling, and by that time, you don't like it or you don't make any sales or you don't make any money or no one likes your course, you can you, you get a refund if you want. Okay? Now, so now you're probably asking how much is going to, how much is the course? Now, this course, um, I'm putting the, I'm putting in use here, guys, what I would typically do. Now, for some of this course, when I start advertising for it, it's going to be 1997 $1,997, all right? Now, I'm in the soft launch stage of this course. I have not put all the course together, but ideally what I want to show you, I'm going to go, I'm basically going to walk you through all these steps that are in the guide, all right? I'm going to walk you through all these steps that are in the guide, okay, in a nutshell. And we're going to pre-sell your course, and then once we pre-sell the course, then we're going to go in, and then we'll start showing you how to actually put your course together to deliver it. All right, so the first 30 days, we're going to pre-sell your course, get everything together, pre-sell your course, all right? Show you how to do that, advertise, traffic, all that good stuff. And then once we pre-sell, start getting leads, start getting people, customers, then we're going to put our course together, and we're going to deliver the course. I'm going to show you how to do that, all right? So that's part of the course. And so I'm really going to walk you through these guides. We're going to go in more detail. So ideally... If there's a hard launch, it would be $1,997. Well, I'm going to soft launches, guys, because, hey, I'm honest with you, I'm doing what I'm telling you here. The course is not complete. I'm going to put the course together live with you, and I want to be able to get your feedback, all right? So if that being said, the cost is $297, all right? A deep discount off of $1,997, ain't it? All right? It's a soft launch. I want to get your feedback. We're going to be doing it live together. It's going to be a group of us. We're going to be doing it live together. There might be some mistakes I make, but whatever, whatever. You might say, Claude, I didn't really like, I didn't understand that. So I want to give you an opportunity to get in really, really inexpensively during my soft launch to get your feedback. That's the reason. That's the reason of a soft launch. You learn more about that in the course, okay? But I'm giving you an example of it now, all right? So for $297, you can get in for this course. But guys, I want to do something better for you than that today. I really do. I really do. All right? So I really want you guys, you're not even going to pay $297. I want you to get in right now for the low price of just $49, all right? I'm putting, if you're in the, um, in my webinar room, you're going to be able to see the offer right now. Launch your online course, how to create an online course to assess your proof your business, all right? Launch your online course. And how this thing's going to work, you're going to get 83% off of my soft launch price. My soft launch price is $297, but because you're on this webinar, you're on this webinar right now, you're only going to pay $49, which is 83% off, actually 83.5% off of $297. So you're only paying $49 right now. So if you get, if you go in here, oh, I forgot to launch it. Sorry, it's in the webinar room now if you want it. You go in there, you can get it for $49 to get into the course. Now the course is already set up. I already got some pre, I already got some prerequisite videos in the course already for you. I got a manual, a deep dive manual of how to launch your actual online course, more than this resource and cheat sheet guide that's already in there, right? And you're going to get access to that immediately along with some videos, right? So you better go through that here over the next, as soon as you get in, right? And get your feet wet and get and get your appetite ready. Because then in January, we're going to go, I want to go live with you each and every week. Every week we're going to go live for about eight, six to eight weeks. It's definitely going to be six weeks. I think I can get it all done in six weeks. If not, I'll go over it. No big deal. We'll go over it to eight weeks. Because, you know, we got, 
I say eight weeks because I know there's going to be some holidays and sometimes I might miss. I know it's going to be eight weeks, but content wise, it's about six weeks. All right. And remember, you get a 30 day money back guarantee. So for any reason, up to, you buy the day in 30 days, you don't you decide before you even start the, the live session, you don't like it. I refund your money. Then once we start the live sessions, you're going to have some time to steal what I like to call. You know, my results guarantee. If you don't get the results you were looking for from the pre-sale, then I'll refund your money. All right? I will refund your forty nine dollars. So you're like after sixty days, I can still you can still get a refund on your money. All right. So that's how I believe I believe in it so much, guys. I believe I, why I'm giving you this. I'm taking up all the risk for you. All right. I'm bringing on all the risk. I'm doing it low price, forty nine dollars soft ones, because I want your feedback. Be a point point blank honest, guys. I just want your feedback. And this is great because I want to make this the greatest course of all to help people, significantly help a lot of people because I believe this is the way not only in a recession, but also in during good times. Not in not in a recession. Or outside of a recession. I don't even want to look at it. On the uptrends and the downtrends, this is the way to go. So if I can help you and you give me good feedback, that's why I'm offering you a deep discount to the soft launch at forty nine dollars. So, guys, if you want it, go ahead and jump in. Go ahead and buy it now, guys. I'd really appreciate it now. Um, look, I mean, you click on the link and go to the sales page. There's going to be a timer on there, right? The timer, depending on when you click on the link, right? It's only going to be roughly less than seven days in order for you to make the decision if you want to get in for $49. This is completely, completely honest transparent with you, right? Because I'm going to give this webinar again, and I'm not sure I'm going to get the same price again. That's why I put a timer on there for you. Because actually, like I can tell you, the soft launch is actually $297. But I'm going to give it to you right now for $49. So I think it's going to be cool. You got any questions, guys? Give me some questions. you have any questions for me? If you have any questions for me whatsoever, let me know. I will answer them in the chat or in the, in the, in the webinar room. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay? All right. No questions? All right, guys, guess what? That's there. It's in the room. If you want to get it, go get it now. God bless you all. Hope you enjoyed this, right? Get the resources. They're free. If you want to do it yourself, go ahead, have it. I hope it helps you. Let me know if it helps you. Reach out to me if it helps you, right? And then, hey, guys, if you want to jump on the opportunity to get a part of my launch, your online course at the Soft Fund Deep Discount because you attended this webinar at for this $49, go ahead and take advantage of that as well. All right, God bless you guys so much. I love you all. I can't wait to meet you guys inside the course. Take care and God bless you. Bye now.